If you're a person who likes thrifting and knitting or crocheting or actually kind of any DIY for that matter, then I've got something special for you this week. In this week's video, I'm actually going thrifting for old knitting and DIY books and I'm taking you with me. And then later in the video, you're also gonna see me crocheting a bag. So grab your crochet hook or your knitting needles or any handcrafting tool around and join me on this adventure. It's Saturday morning. We've been up for a little while already and um, I had the idea or I've been wanting to actually kind of um, go to one of the thrift shops I really like because in book sections in thrift shops there are oftentimes these um, old like knitting books and pattern books and like instructions and stuff and that's actually really fun because there are like very amazing patterns in these or like just fun things to get inspired by and obviously they're extremely cheap they also kind of stay in these sections for a while because i think oftentimes when people want to get a book nowadays to to knit or thrift they could obviously go for something more modern so i like to check them out and give these books a new home and the local thrift shop here i wanted to go to actually isn't open today which is pretty sad so um, it's Saturday of the Easter weekend and usually shops would be open but in this one they're taking a longer Easter break which is fine but there's another one outside of the city that is a bit further away and it's kind of hard to get to with public transport like not impossible honestly there's almost like no place in Switzerland where it's impossible to get to with pu uh, public transport but just to go there it takes a very long time um, we have this kind of very easy car rental system here where you can just like there are like um, cars parked all over the city on different spots and you can just go there and like um, rent it for even just a very short amount of time like I rented it for one and a half hour and it's an electric car and we're gonna take that car and go to the thrift shop and also like it's 11 o'clock now it's closing at 12 so and I have 15 minutes to get there so we don't have like a lot of time um, so let's go to a thrift shop. There is also a big chance that there isn't anything, like it's always a big lottery with these kinds of thrift shops, but we'll see. Let's go. I have my driver's license. Good to go. The person who was in here before, oh my god, is really tall. Yeah. This car is actually really funny. Um, it has no mirrors outside, it has cameras. Let me show you. Oh, hello, person. These are like cameras, it's not mirrors. Like, do you see the little camera there? It films. This car is so small and compact. Perfect for European cities. So I trusted my um, GPS too much and parked in the entirely wrong spot, but I'm here. It's on the other side of the street and I will just go there now. Let's hope I can get my car out of where I parked just now afterwards. Um, I left this thrift shop. It was very cute, like very nice, but there were no books at all. Like I kid you not, not none at all. And um, then when I went back to my car, well, I did buy something, which I will reveal in the end. Um, I'm not gonna spoil it. Um, and then I passed by like um, this, we have like these 
spaces where you can bring your um, recyclables, but also like furniture, also like larger stuff. And um, I had to walk by this to get to my car. And then there was like a cart where they put all the books um, that come out of that recyclable or that people just place there. And you're actually supposed to bring book bring a book and then take a book but I didn't have any books with me and the cart was like overloaded it was like so full <laughs> there was no more space for books actually um so yeah I was sneaky and I just took two books and I will show them in the end because they're awesome but yeah and now there are like a few more like boxes and and baskets that I could use for my knitting room because right now it's a big mess again because things are like overflowing and I don't have like enough boxes to put all my projects in like I have many boxes but yeah I have like many smaller projects going on and it's just like out of order everything like it's not as tidy as it could be so I could also go to Ikea and get more of these boxes so I might just do that go there and then maybe go to the really cool thrift shop close to my home another day and take you with me after being at ikea for like only 30 minutes like i basically ran through that shop um i was very overstimulated and decided that i need to go home and um so i'm back home now so i just um put everything into my house and now i'm bringing the car back and i'm in the parking lot of bringing the car back and that was actually really fun Goodbye. So we're back home and now we're actually going to get into what I thrifted and found today. I have to say thrifted and found because remember the books were for free so yeah I'm gonna show them to you um, the books a bit more in detail and the other things that I got briefly. Okay, let's look at the book that we found. We have a little kitty here and his little kitty leg. Um, he's partaking in this action. Okay, so this is the one book that has like several different methods in it. It has patchwork, applications, macrame, knitting, crocheting, carpets, lace, tapestry, stepping and stitching. The original book is from 1979 and this is kind of the um, second edition from 1982. First is kind of the stitching and first it talks about like um, fabrics and the materials and all some more details and then it shows like the different stitches that are around. I feel like if I ever really try this I think this would be such a good guide like to show you some basic methods. It looks really really nice. This is also really beautiful. I love books like this because it gives you kind of this chance of discovering maybe things that aren't like popular online right now or maybe are but like from a different vantage point or yeah just like it's kind of a palette cleanser of like methods how to care for it how to set it up to hang it and some more patterns and here we have like cross stitch so now we're at tapestry, how you kind of do tapestry stitching. Just going to go through this quickly because otherwise we're going to be on it for years. Very beautiful. Awesome methods. Woo. Now we're crocheting. Yes, this is the first one I know. It has like basic yarns and needles and how to I mean, it starts at the complete like basics, so it's actually a really good guide. I like this bag. And then how to make shapes, different types of kind of decorative stitches. Very beautiful. Oh, I love these flowers. Wow, granny squares. Oh, now we're getting to color work. Amazing. Oh, different shoulder seams. That's very good to know, like how to construct these. 
<laughs> that looks nice as well. Look, look at how nice and clean this V-neck looks. Beautiful. Okay. Oh, buttonholes. Oh, buttonholes and buttons. And lace trim. Beautiful. Oh, now actually lace stitching. Oh my god, I could never imagine with working with yarn this small. This is that's amazing. That's crazy. Wow. Wow. Yeah, it's beautiful. I would never have like enough patience to even attempt this. Oh, macrame. I could have used this for my video. <laughs> Wow. Oh, and now how to make fringes. Now we're at carpets. So this is like, is this called tafting? And this is like working with needles and this is working with like needle punch. So I actually only know needle punch. Wow. Knitting. This is our section. This is what we're here for. Okay, so even how to like roll up your yarn that's that's awesome and i also like the yarn types here Ooh, even tips for how to buy your yarn okay kind of notions explained i actually have this and i never use this this is kind of for color work i don't think that this thing is useful this looks much more useful to me so just fyi Okay, and then you have like cast on, different cast on methods, basic knit stitches, beautiful. And how to cast off and how to make nice edges. And then you have how to make fringe and a scarf and gauge swatching, increases, more increases, <laughs> decreases more decreases, how to fix mistakes. Oh, how to work using five needles. Nice patterns. Oh, I like this one. Beautiful. Oh, that's actually, oh my God. Oh, this is amazing. Okay, I will go over this again. This will probably be future inspiration. I love special knitting stitches and I love that these books have these in it. Yes, color work patterns. Wow, and then how to make an item of clothing. Ooh, and it even has like sizes. Wow, different colors. And then different like sweater constructions. Also very nice. These are all seamed together though. I haven't seen raglan so far, so. Oh, you can actually sew a seam. I never thought of that to be quite honest. Pockets. Ooh, blocking. Even this book tells you that blocking is important. And then just some patterns. And then we're at the um, index. Very nice. Okay, so this is just a book about stitching. And uh, I mean, the cover already kind of implies that this is a newer book. It's from 2003. Okay, so we have kind of starting with the fabrics yarns needles and then it starts with like different stitches i might need to make a youtube video at some point where i try this wow this is beautiful oh my god i want to do this wow oh my god this is beautiful gosh falling in love like i feel like i need to try this now this is a pillow to bring like wedding rings on imagine if someone made this like for you that's so cute let's go through it a bit quicker Oh, it also has like a stitch index. So you can kind of look at the stitch by its name. Very nice. This is the second book. So these were kind of the two books I found. See, it was absolutely worth it checking it out. And I mean, I didn't even have to pay for these because they were on that card. So yeah, I can highly recommend you doing that. Go to your thrift shop and um, go and look at the book section. It's always like so awesome. 
I also talked about going to Ikea and getting more boxes and baskets. Um, I got like these, these are like very small boxes and as you hear already in use. It's just because when I work on like um, my little table or something, I tend to just place everything on there and then it looks really messy. And I just put the things in here and then I can place the lid on it when I'm no longer working on it. This is a bit less pretty, but I also got this bucket. Um, it has like buckets in two different depths and I use these not for cleaning or anything but like to actually block my clothing because I keep like blocking my sinks and that's really annoying so I got this as well and then I got this chest so I had to get it it's so beautiful like let me show you so I still need to clean it but and get like the sticker off that was on it but this is like the front these are like in really like good conditions it still even like has the matching key and then when you open it I have to say the smell when I open it is not not particularly pleasant, but I'm just quickly going to show you like. So, I mean, here you see that it's old and you can then lift this up and this is like the lower area and put this back in. I need to air this out somehow. There are like belts in here to close this. I'm not 100% sure yet what I'm going to do with it. I thought about um, attaching little wheels onto the bottom that I can use it like as a couch table, but then I'd have to like be really careful with um, putting coasters on it. I also found these beautiful little old like tea cans. There used to be tea in it, but yeah, they are really pretty. It was supposed to be a very sunny day today and it's kind of sunny as you might see, but it's also like very gray and that's not fog. It's sahara dust so it's like sand from from the sahara desert that is um in the air and like it's very warm and and you and it's kind of bright but there's like this grayish hue in the sky yeah. so let me show you something that i started yesterday evening so i started making a crochet handbag and this is kind of um, I'm just doing a single crochet with the leftover macrame rope I have from trying macrame and um, then in after a few rows here I just um, for one row only like knitted in the I think I only crocheted sorry I only crocheted into the back loop and now I have this nice fold and I think I'm gonna add like one more two one or two more rows and then I'm going to again only crochet into the back loop and then this way kind of fold it upwards so this is going to be a little back um, probably doesn't look like it yet but um, yeah it'll make sense once um, it starts kind of growing on the other side as well so that's what we're doing right now yesterday was Friday and I actually spent the entire day editing um, my strangle me with fashion pattern so I did kind of the grading for all the sizes I'm not completely finished with the grading yet. I still have like a few steps to go where I need to calculate the stitches and then I need to go through all of the nine sizes and, and calculate through them and, and kind of see if, if the numbers make sense so that I can send it out and I plan on sending it out on Tuesday. Um, so I think I'm probably going to finish the pattern tomorrow and, and um, yeah, then we'll see i might even send it out a bit early for the people who have already applied um, to test it and that's that and then i'm also thinking about this bag so here i use this macrame yarn because like the kind of the sides it's like really like sturdy which is really good for a handbag right you don't want it to be too soft and like fall in on itself but you want it to be like upright and stiff and also you don't want there to be gaps that something falls out so I think this is actually like really good rope to use to um, crochet a bag with I'm quite impressed on how well it works wowza yeah but that's kind of that's what's on my mind right now and that's what we're doing right now um I do have some other things going. I'm making this Jangle Me with Fashion Top um, another time, like one more time to test like a different yarn and to see if um, to see if the buttons work. So I added buttons in the back in the pattern and on my original sample I, I had it that you have to pull it over your head but it's... There's one plastic bag in this room and my cat decides to lay on it. 
thank you yeah but um yeah i'm testing the thing with the buttons um with another sample that i'm making of the strangle me, strangle me with fashion top so yeah i'm just gonna watch a bit of um tv now and continue on this bag i'm actually at the point now where i think like it's wide enough so this is like the width now so i'm gonna just crochet through the back loop here if you look at this up close then you see kind of that you have like the, this front strand here and this is the back strand or like when i look at it this for me is the back strand and now i'm not gonna go in, i'm not gonna be crocheting like through the entire stitch but only like through the front strand which for me is the front strand so that i get this bend that i have here and then it looks like this on the outside Okay, so I made um, both sides now. So this is the bag now. Now I'm going to make slip stitches here so that I, ha that I have a nice and clean edge. And then I will continue up here with the other sides. Okay, so I decided not to make slip stitches, but I crocheted with like second crochet around the entire edge because I think it gives it like a nicer border here and now I'm gonna attach the yarn on this side then make kind of this this side of the bag and then on this side and do it as well and then we can seam it together and then it's already done <laughs> Okay, um, I have now seamed up the sides on the inside and I still have all these ends to like weave in but I think we're ready to flip it inside out. Yep, that looks like the shape of a bag, yay! Um, okay, now I'm going to weave in all the ends and then I still need to make the handles. But yeah, it's coming around. Okay, uh, I have now made one handle and I'm working on the second and then I will kind of, I will sew them together from around like here and then I use this part to like sew it onto the back and then we get like an entire handle and then on the other side again and then we have like a handle that is like this. So. Now I'm just making the second one. I don't have much of this left. I feel like I might just get around to like finishing it. Okay, so the light situation isn't ideal, but I just wanted to show you. I finished the bag. This is it. It's complete. I think it's really cute. It's just like a very small like handbag and I want to make a strap onto it as well where you can like hang it around yourself but um, kind of with all the rope that I had this is where I got so I mean these ends are literally what I have left. I don't have like any more so yeah I'd have to get some more and for now I think this is like fine. It's cute isn't it? But yeah it's now the afternoon on monday and i think this kind of concludes our easter weekend vlog i hope you liked this video if you did then please like this video leave a comment down below and um, subscribe to this channel i put out videos at least once a week and you can also go over to my other socials to instagram and tiktok i post videos there as well and I also have a Patreon account if you want to leave some additional support. You can go over there. The tester call for the Strangle Me with Fashion Top is still going on. You can still apply. I'll probably leave the sign up form open for a bit longer because I don't yet have enough people for all sizes. So especially if you're size XL or larger, then do please consider applying to testnet this. I would be really grateful. 
Um, also, if you think you won't make it in within the deadline, then you can just leave this as a remark in the form. That's fine. Like I much rather you test parts of it than none of it at all. So yeah, that would be really cool if you decided to sign up to testnet that top. And um, yeah, other than that, I think that's it for this week. Thank you so much for watching and see you next time.